I wonder this morning, child of God, have you ever, or perhaps at this moment in time, you're facing a no-win situation. What seems to be a no-win situation. Everything perhaps in your situation looks beyond any hope. And I wonder this morning, child of God, are you struggling? Are you struggling over some dark moment that's going on in your life? And this morning, child of God, humanly speaking, now I'm talking humanly speaking, as you study it, and as you look at it, to you, it seems to be a no-win situation. It seems hopeless. But here's the question the Lord wants to put onto our hearts just now, perhaps. As we or you may be facing this situation, it's dark, it's difficult, it's heartbreaking. And for you, it's beyond hope. But here's the question the Lord wants to touch your heart with this morning, as He's been touching mine. For mine, He needs to be touching my heart before He touches anybody's heart. But here's the question this morning. In what gear is your faith as you face this difficult dilemma? What gear is your faith in? Now, I want to take this word faith because a lot of people use the word faith very lightly. People say, ah, oh, well, sure, I have my faith in, and I have my faith. My faith will see me through. But what kind of faith? You see, everybody has faith. Everybody has natural faith. Everybody has natural faith. You lift the newspaper and you read some big headline and your faith tells you that that must be true. Frank Mitchell comes on perhaps and gives you the weather forecast. We're going to hit the 40 degrees centigrade tomorrow. Never you mind the rain, never you mind the coldness. It's faith that makes you almost accept what he says, or what the news reporter reveals. Everybody has not your faith in accepting what they read or what they have. And then there's what we call business faith. Boys, you need faith when you're in business. I remember the very first time when shortly after I was converted, I was talking to a Christian milkman. Yes, a Christian milkman. He says, if you want to grow in faith, he says, you need to be a milkman. He says, hey, what do you mean? Well, he says, it's like this. When you're going around people's houses and you're dropping off two liters of milk here and some pint of milk, well, pints in those days, and pint of milk here and pints of milk there, your faith goes into action right away as to whether you're going to get paid next Friday evening or not. And he says, your faith is really tried because some of the customers actually know when you're coming and suddenly... They don't come to the door, you're rapping the door, you're ding a ling the bell three or four times when you're pushing the bell, and there's no sign of nobody, and suddenly faith kicks in. And you give the bell door another rock, you give the bell another push, and you stand back to see, is there any, is there any sort of life at all? And then all of a sudden you see the curtains moving upstairs. And then he says to me, then your faith really takes over for your shouting through the other box, I know you're in there, missus, because it's in you. You know, that's business faith. 
You men in business, you know what it's like. Somebody comes to you and, and, uh, and you make this deal, you sign the deal, you sign the docket, and you give that person there away with maybe thousands of pounds worth of stuff, and then your faith tells you there should be a check in the post within 30 days. I remember the time I worked in Derek Loans. I remember we sold this boy a car one time, but Derek got checked soon as a pound. And the check wasn't away five days, it come back like a basketball. The man, he was away with his car. And Derek, he got on the phone and he says, uh, that we check that you have, he says it come back. Oh, well, Derek, I'm sorry, I missed putting the funds into that account. You put it back in again. And Derek, as sure as I'm talking to you on the phone, you'll have no trouble with it. He did put it back into the bank again, but it come back like a boomerang. And, uh, but that's business faith. Listen, folks, you businessmen, you know what it's like, don't you? You sign the docket and you, you put your faith in that person's word that they're going to pay you. I was taught in business, one bad deal can close the 40 years of work. And it's so true. Faith, everybody works with faith, not your faith, business faith. But the Lord wants to talk to us this morning about spiritual faith. What about your faith this morning? And what gear is your faith? How does our faith operate when all seems hopeless and we find ourselves in a no-win situation? I hear people saying, but I've lost my faith. Do you ever hear that? I hear people saying, but I have lost my faith. Listen, dear friend, it's not that you've lost your faith, but your faith has lost its focus. It's not that you've lost your faith, but your faith has lost its focus. The wee title that I've placed upon God's message this morning is Martha's Threefold Faith. God wants us to look this morning at Martha's faith in action in what seems to be a no-win situation. Her brother is dead. Not only has he died, but decay has set in. And here this morning, the Lord wants us, and he wants to teach us, and he wants to, look, to speak to our hearts this morning concerning about Martha's threefold faith. Martha's threefold faith this morning have got three creases. And each crease in our faith, the Lord Jesus in every crease. Did you notice this morning in verse 21, Martha's faith is working, but it's working in a past tense. So many of God's people today, and that's how their faith is working. Faith works in a past tense. Now listen, the Lord Jesus is in this crease. Listen to what Martha says. Verse 21, she then said, Martha, unto Jesus, Lord, if thou hadst been here, my brother had not died. Now, the Lord Jesus is certainly in that fold of her faith. But here, Martha, this morning, her faith is working in a past tense. Lord, if thou hadst been here, my brother had not died. Can you imagine the days leading up to his death? We're told in Scripture that the Lord Jesus was, was great friends with, with Mary and, and with Martha and with Lazarus. Can you imagine the two sisters sitting at the bedside? They've sent word to the Lord Jesus, but the Lord Jesus delays his coming. And time's running out in the situation. And the more and every time time slips away, they see Lazarus slipping away, and they're hoping and praying and hoping that the Lord Jesus will make it in time. Lazarus closes his eyes. He breathes his last. 
the Spirit goes, and his body becomes a lifeless corpse. As Mary and Martha look upon the face of Lazarus, cold, dead, lifeless, they're looking at now what they would call a no-win situation. And her, Martha says to the Lord Jesus, Lord, if thou had been here, my brother had not died. You see, she knew, her faith told her, that the Lord Jesus was able to save him and prevent him from dying. I wonder this morning, is there someone and you're facing this morning a difficult situation. Someone facing a no-win situation. And this morning, your faith is saying to you, Lord, if you had have been here, if you had have come, if you would have intervened, things would have been different. That's what Martha's saying this morning. And maybe, child of God, this morning, this is you. The bottom has fallen out of your boat. You knew something was going to happen, and yes, you prayed and you prayed, and maybe perhaps even fasted and prayed, but the Lord was silent in your situation. And you know that if the Lord had been here, as Martha says, my brother had, would not have died. And perhaps you're saying this morning, and you've been saying over this last number of days, if the Lord had have done this, or if this, or if that, or the other thing, things would have been different. I wouldn't be in this situation. Faith working in a past tense. You know, child of God, we can all find ourselves in situations. We can all find ourselves in circumstances where we wish things would have been different. Lord, if. When your faith works in a past tense like Martha. Your faith rests on regret rather than reality. If only I had tried harder at school. If only I had applied for this job. If only I had applied for that job. Would have been a different story. Faith that works in a past tense doesn't change anything. I was showing Tracy last night a photograph of a young lad, good friend of mine, 22 years of age, who was murdered on the 25th of February, 1983. Him and me played in the same flute band together. We were together in Charlotte Woods' sweetie shop on the Wednesday night. And he was shot dead on the Friday morning at half past eight. Part-time member of the Ulster Defence Regiment. For a long time I said to myself, if only Cecil had changed his route that morning. If only Cecil would have parked the car maybe in a different place. If only he had a tuck sick that morning and failed to show up, things would have been so different. The big question, would it have been different? I remember the first Lord's Day in July 2000. I was in Koch Baptist that morning, and I'll tell you, we were staying with friends that afternoon, friends who we, Tracy, may have known for many years. I switched the television on for the lunchtime news. 
the news come through that Joey Dunlap had been killed in Estonia. Same story, if Joey had only given up on the race, if Joey only had have retired, if Joey would have stayed at home rather than going to Estonia, it would have been different. That's faith on a past tense. Now listen, child of God, God is sovereign in all situations, whether it's good or bad. And saying, Lord, if, is like trying to turn the clock back to make situations different, and that's something you cannot do. Did you notice Martha's faith? Lord, if only, if, Lord, if thou hadst been here, my brother would not have died. Mary's faith was looking us to what could have happened. I want you to notice verse 22 because her faith changes gear. Because she says now in verse 22, But I know, but I know that even now whatsoever thou wilt ask of God, God will give it thee. You know, she takes her faith out of reverse gear. And maybe, child of God, this is what the Lord wants you to do this morning. And the Lord wants you to get out of that situation. Get out of reverse gear. Stop looking back as to what way you would have liked it to be, what way you wish it would have happened. Listen this morning. God wants you to look at the present. I love what Martha says, but I know that even now, even now, even now he's dead. Even now decay has set in. Even now her faith was saying, Lord, you can make a difference. Do you know what her faith was saying? Her faith was saying this. Verse 21, what could have happened? Verse 22, it's now what can happen. Listen, child of God, is there some impossible case in your life at this moment in time? A family member off the rails, a son, a daughter, Even now the Lord Jesus is saying, look to me. Martha's faith changes gear to the present. Her faith is no longer resting on regret on what could have been. Her faith is now resting on the reality what now can be. In spite of what is happening to you now spiritually. In spite of what is happening to you now mentally. In spite of what is happening to you now emotionally. It may seem, it is perhaps, dead and lifeless to you now. Even now, God has the power to raise it up again. Martha's faith, even now. Listen, child of God. He's not the God. He's the God of the present. He's not the God of the impossible. He's the God of the possible. And listen, child of God, it may seem a no-win situation to me, to you, but there's no such thing as a no-win situation to the Lord. Whether we choose this morning to keep our faith in reverse, or whether we choose to move our faith forward, there's a lesson in all of this. And the lesson is this. 
Lazarus' death didn't take the Savior by surprise. He knew it happened before he, he even arrived. And here's what the Lord wants you to know this morning. Nothing comes into your life. Nothing comes into my life. Nothing can come into our lives unless the Lord has allowed it. Child of God, how many times we ask the question, why? Why was Lazarus allowed to die? Why did the Lord allow it to go so far? I tell you why, because there was a purpose in it. And there was a plan in it. Listen to what he says in verse 15, I am glad for your sakes that I was not there to the intent ye may believe. You know, child of God, there are lessons to be learned in tragedies. There's lessons to be learned in redundancies. There's lessons to be learned in, in, in illnesses. There's lessons to be learned in no-win situations that cannot be learned anywhere else. God can never prove himself unless he brings you and unless he brings me here. Perhaps this morning you are facing a no-win situation. God has you this morning in the very place where he wants you to see. And he wants you to understand that he can do a powerful thing for you and for his glory. Listen, maybe there's somebody here this morning and you have failed him. Maybe this morning there's somebody here and you fell flat in your face. You've hurt others. And you're living with a life of regret. I want to tell you something this morning. Christ can take you out of that pit of despair. He can make you live again. He can bring the joy back into that heart of yours. He can put the song back upon your lips. He can put the smile back on your face. There's nothing impossible for the Lord. Even now, she says, Whatsoever thou wilt ask of God, God will give it thee. Do you know what even now faith is? It's a faith that sees beyond the impossibility. Even now faith is a faith that soars above the impossibility. Even now. Child of God, even now Christ can meet you at your need. He can raise whatever that circumstance is. He can raise it again. He can bring it back again. He can bring you back to where you were. But you have to choose to take your faith out of reverse gear. Thirdly, did you notice the third fold in our faith? Look at verse number 24. Verse 23, Jesus saith unto her, Thy brother shall rise again. Verse 24, Martha said unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Her faith was working in a past tense. Her faith was working in a present tense. Her faith now works in a prospect tense. 
it looks at the prospect ahead. I know he will rise again. I want to talk about the positive and the negative concerning faith in a prospect sense. First of all, positively, and it's this. She knew that there was a day coming when her brother would rise again. She knew that. You know, this is the prospect for every believer today. Maybe you're here the day, child of God. You've lost a loved one. Today they're in heaven, their remains is in the grave. But thank God the day was coming, that is coming, that they will rise again. The day will come when Christ will come to the air, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Thank God the grave is not final. It's only temporal. I know we shall rise again. And that's the wonderful prospect of the Christian faith. Thank God there's a brighter day ahead. But listen to the Lord Jesus now. He doesn't say, I will be the resurrection and the life. He says, I am. I am. I am the resurrection and the life. Listen, Martha, I'm the person who deals with this now. Listen, child of God, sometimes too many of us will spend living our lives in the past. And so many believers live their lives in the future. Two brethren walking up the street one day says, and the two faces were all... Now, I'm talking about two brethren in the Lord. I'm not talking to the brethren of the denomination, but these two brethren were always doom and gloom. Always doom and gloom. One said to the Lord, cheer up now for we'll be dead soon. Oh, no, friends. Oh, no. Faith must work in there. Faith must learn from the past. And faith must look to the prospect. Faith must live in the present. Four times it says in Scripture, the just shall live by faith. You know, child of God, the Lord Jesus wants to meet you in your situation today. Do you know why? It's because He cares. He wants to do for you what you've been trying to do for years, to get yourself out of that situation. Listen, He wants to take you out of it because you can't get yourself out of it. Christ raises what man can't raise. Christ can do what only man can do. whatever what seems to be, friends, a no-win situation in your life, faith can say, He cares for me. May God bless His Word to our hearts this morning. Just trust Him, friends, won't you? Trust Him for whatever you're facing. Trust Him for whatever you're going through. Trust Him for the here and now. May God bless you.